Hi, I'm Anna Lidicole, the sickeningly entertaining and educational coding drag queen here doing another Leak Code coding interview question to help with our coding interview practice. Coding interviews are such a pain, so the more questions you can see and think about solving, the better you have success, the better chances you've got of getting those jobs in tech. We're gonna do a question called a valid palindrome here today. We're just, this is an easy one, but it's always good to start easy and work your way up. Go and try this on your own. There will be a link in the description. That is the best way to solve these problems is tr doing them yourself and writing out that code. If you're not writing out the code, you are probably not gonna be able to learn it as effectively. So go write out that code and be right back. Oh, you're back, oh, wonderful, great to have you. So here we're going to check if a phrase is a palindrome. So a, a, a phrase is a palindrome if after converting all uppercase letters into lowercase letters and removing non-alphanumeric characters, it reads the same forwards and backwards. Alphanumeric characters include letters and numbers. So if they're, so here it's like we've got, um, in our example text, we've got a man comma, a plan comma, a canal comma, Panama. Whoa, no, what? I don't know. And then the other one is race space a car. So here we're removing spaces, commas, basically anything that's not words and concatenating them. And then we're gonna wanna kind of compare through. So let's just kind of talk through what this algorithm might look like. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of all of those unnecessary characters. And we probably want to do this as we're maybe adding the other characters to a queue. Let's just have a function that can say function is um, function is alpha numeric. If you were doing this in a coding interview where you were maybe at a whiteboard and don't actually have to run the code, it's sometimes helpful to just define functions like that out of the way because their interviewer might not actually care about, can you write a function that does this? And there's probably some built-in JavaScript thing that I'm, I'm gonna go look up to do that, um, which is always good to think about. Like if this thing is alphanumeric is tripping up, just write a function and deal with that part later. So I would loop through, so let, let me be like, um, sanitized, sanitized text equals, um, that'll be our variable. We can start with this. And then for each character in S, we are going to add it to our sanitized text. So I'm kind of thinking as I'm going through, like we're gonna know if this is a palindrome at the halfway point because or we'll be able to start kind of checking if it's a palindrome at that halfway point. So I'm kind of thinking it might be nice to just get the sanitized text because in terms of algorithmic complexity, if we're just looping through the, the word once or twice, or just kind of like a set number of times, we don't really have, it's not gonna change the complexity that much and we can figure out other, other optimiz optimizations on the way. So let's get that sanitized text. So S dot for each, um, for each character, and I should also like, that will be an input for al is alphanumeric. Um, if it's alphanumeric, then, If it's alphanumeric, then add it to the sanitized text. Great. So now we can actually start thinking about that length. And that's, that's actually kind of a good call because to get the sanitized text, because otherwise we're gonna have an issue of there could be a ton of commas at the end. And if we have a lot of commas at the end, those are gonna get deleted or maybe spaces. So we need to, we really need to be working with the length of our sanitized text. So now we could do perhaps like a two pointer approach and kind of work our way through. So we could have like let left equal zero, let right equal 
sanitized um, text.length minus one. And like while these things, while left is, while the left is less than the right, we're gonna check each character. So like, I'll just comment that here, check or compare characters. I'll just write compare. I hate writing the word character. It's always takes up a lot of mental energy. Compare, and we find a mismatch. If mismatch, return false, because it's not a palindrome. And then we're going to add a return true at the end after that loop. So that's always going to be the case. If we get through that while loop without dealing with anything, without finding any mismatches, we're in the clear. We got our palindrome. And then we'll also have to like left plus plus. I don't need to pseudocode that. Left plus plus, right minus minus. Great. So now let's start doing this comparison. So if um, I do need to work on shorter variable names, especially if you're whiteboarding, then you know you might be you you might run into an issue of too long variable names. Like I probably would just make this like T or something, or like P for palindrome. Sanitize text left if it does not equal the right, then return false. So now I need to have this is alphanumeric character. And I, again, I kind of mentioned this earlier, this is not really a thing that's gonna be, you're not getting, you're not having JavaScript trivia on your interview. So I'm just gonna look up JavaScript is alphanumeric. Um, there's a regex I can use for it. That's kind of seems like an easy way to, to check. Um, I also, I'm going to need to get these char codes at, I'm realizing. Um, input string dot match. Let's do this match. And again, I don't really recommend, like, when you're doing your coding interviews, you're probably not going to have, like, you're, you're not going to be able to look stuff up, but, like, your interviewer, if you're in person or doing it with someone, they'll probably say, you can go and look that up. Or if you're being sent like a lead code or a hacker rank, any of those kinds of interviews that they send out, um, you you can probably like copy and paste in some of these bits as well, and there that won't cause any issues. So C dot match. So we're gonna return C dot match, and I think that will be true. Um, I might. I'm just gonna. I would. I feel like I should like test that out, but I like to live on the edge on this channel. <laughs> so I got my sanitized text. I will console.log it out just to kind of check, sanitize text, and also log out the S. Oh, we're saving it. Let's just run the code and see kind of where we're at. Hmm. So I do need to be careful. I think there's two car array that I'm going to need to get for this. And then here I'm going to need to do dot car code at, and this is, I should be more careful with my variables. I was like left and right and all this stuff. And I was not checking it correctly as I was going through it. But on this channel, I like to run the code and see the results. Um, line eight, car dot two to car array is not a function. Oof. Don't I, you will definitely not be able to debug on your coding interviews. To car array JavaScript. I feel like I'm looking up so much stuff in this in in, in this example interview, but. Okay, I guess I can just do array from array dot from. Now, if you are saying that you're like a JavaScript expert, 
they might question like, oh, you didn't know that or all these things. So that is mind the good to be mindful. And also as you practice more, I am out of I'm certainly out of practice for my coding interviews, but not out of practice for thinking about algorithms and solving problems. All these things like converting a string to characters or getting the characters at certain locations and strings, those should be things you get comfortable at in your programming language. So you are ready to go. And write car code at, okay, at least spelt this one wrong. <laughs> there is no autocomplete in this editor. And you might not, you know, you might not get an editor to do. So let's see. Mm, I forgot a crucial component. We have to convert all uppercase letters into lowercase letters as well. So here we ignored a man, but looking at everything else, it seems like we're getting it right. I'm just going to copy, copy this text below. I just wanted to get one of them, but that's fine. I just want to compare it exactly to this output they had. And if I were to add A, and then the P for Panama, and then, okay. So our, that part of our string is correct. And I need to think about the, the other part of our, of our program. So let um, lower, so it is alphanumeric. I guess I should include it in here as well, A to Z. And it has text and Mm, maybe let's just say like get letter instead. So get letter C. So so if it doesn't match any of these, so if it doesn't match any of these, we're just gonna return an empty string. I know this is not like the most efficient way to do this. Um, here, if it's if it's we have a digit or a lowercase. We have a digit or a lowercase, and I can return C. And then if we have the uppercase case, which is our last case, then we would do C dot to lowercase, which I think is a function. JavaScript to lowercase. Finally, one of the straight one of the things that is actually helpful. To lowercase converts a string to lowercase letters. I'm gonna undo all of this because that was totally unnecessary. <laughs> Again, coding interviews are a skill that you can get better at over time. It is not something to like um so that you will continue to be good at it is something that is a skill you will work towards and it is not a skill that i have worked towards in a while but um, again problem solving is something that i do every day at work and it's interesting to compare the problem solving you do in a pro real programming job versus the interviews to actually get those jobs now let's see what we're getting Amazing. We got our Amana Planet Canal Panama true. Let's run all of our. Um, can I run all the test cases? I must have misclicked. It's just rerunning it again. An example test cases. And now it is a little slow, I think. It's running. I mean, this one ran 68 milliseconds. Okay, but all these test cases, it worked correctly. Let's just submit it to see. There are a few other things I could do to make it a little bit more optimal. Like I've got an empty case. So, so I have that, if I have an empty case, like if the string is empty, just return true. So like if s dot length is less than, not only if it's empty, um, if it's also one character, I can do that. So, although I guess it kind of ends up getting caught in the logic because we have to sanitize it and then we have to do this. But let's see, so like the runtime on this was not good. It was 261 milliseconds faster than only 5% of the submissions for this valid palindrome. And I'm really not in a good place for the memory usage. So there's definitely a better way to do this. 
But let's take a look at some of these solutions for now, because right now we've got this basic kind of solution. So let's see what other people did to optimize this problem. So here we've got a simple solution with JavaScript. I guess let's, let's look at this one, which says it's 92% faster than good. So let's see if they're doing anything different than what we're doing. So here they're doing our similar replacement. So here they're checking if something is not a character or a letter, then replace it with emptiness and convert everything to lowercase. Great. Then they're doing the exact same thing in terms of the left and right pointers. So really, I think, Perhaps one of the things that is slowing this algorithm down that I've written is the fact that I'm adding this string. So string addition can actually be pretty slow. So what they have done in their solution, and maybe if I just submit it again, maybe it'll be faster. Maybe there's some variation. Probably not. I think it's it knows a little bit better. So yeah, I mean, it, it, there is some variation there, but not significantly. It's not making it significantly better. So here, maybe one of the things I would do next time in my solution or in my practice to perform better in this is I would do string replacement and I would know, okay, now I know my two lowercase. I don't have to do all these character matchings and all these things. And here, how are they getting all the letters? Oh yeah, I guess you can actually just index everything like that without having to get the two character at. Well, that is the valid palindrome problem on lead code. Not a super complex problem, but there is a lot of variety in there and a lot you can do with a problem like this. And it's really teaching a lot of great skills about string manipulation, character accessing, and we even did a two pointer um, iteration back and forth. So all these techniques that we're seeing in some of these easy problems that I'm doing to keep myself feeling comfortable is um, all these things will be applied in more complex problems as you advance to more complicated problems. And you will definitely see more like medium and hard style problems in your coding interviews, but it's great to start out easy. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these coding interviews um, or these coding interview style question solves, leave a like, comment, send me any problems that you would like to see me solve because that would be great. I'm just picking these kind of at random, but I am more than happy to take any suggestions. Now I want you to go and try some of these on your own practice, figure out if there are any techniques. I think once I get a little bit more practice, I might make a video going over a few major techniques to kind of think about obviously bring all my drag, bring all my eyeshadows into them and show you the algorithms there. But that is all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck on your coding interview journey. Bye.